All right, here we go, unit three, day five, sketching graphs of polynomial functions. So we're gonna use a lot of the techniques we've learned surrounding factoring and zeros and expand our ability to graph polynomial functions based on those features. So by the end of today, you're going to be able to take a function like 2x cubed minus 8x squared plus 8x and have a pretty good idea of what that's going to look like without even using a graphing calculator. So first, just a brief vocabulary review. This is a polynomial because it has multiple terms. And specifically, it is a trinomial because there are one, two, three separate terms in this function. What we would call the leading term, meaning the term in front when you arrange these in order of highest to lowest exponent is 2x to the third. So if I say the leading term, I'm referring to the entire 2x cubed. The leading coefficient, coefficient just refers to the number. So just refers to that two on the 2x cubed. And finally, the one that's probably the newest and strangest, like least immediately apparent term is this term degree. Degree just means what is the highest exponent that your function has. In this case, the highest exponent that our function has is a to the third power. So we would say this is a third degree polynomial. And this is what it looks like on the right, um, but we're gonna be able to graph that on our own, just in, using our own brain power. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna use our understanding of functions, zeros, and behavior at the ends of this function. We're gonna be able to graph a few things. Number one, the y-intercept, which in this case is at zero, because if x was zero, y would be zero. X-intercepts, in this case, looking at the graph, they occur in two places, at x equals zero and x equals two. This is where the function is equal to zero. And the y-intercept is what happens when you plug in zero. The x-intercepts are also known as zeros because of that last fact. Okay, so let's take today's challenge. Today's challenge is to learn to graph this above function and others like it by using just your brain power. And so let's see what this looks like. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start out by creating a traditional, uh, we're gonna start out by creating a sign chart by doing our traditional factoring. So let's say we take, we take our function f of x, which is equal to 2x cubed minus 8x squared plus 8x, and I say I wanna know when is this function equal to zero, and if you're not a machine, it's really hard to just look at this and figure out what the values of x make f of x equal to zero. So we're gonna do this um, by factoring. So first, all three of these, let me back this up a second, all three of these can be divided by two. So I can factor out a two. And also, all three of them can be divided by at least one x. So I can take out a two x. So I can take out a two x, two x times x squared would give me 2x to the third times negative 4x would give me negative 8x squared and finally plus 4 would give me 8x. Then I would see that we have a perfect square trinomial on the inside because I need two numbers that multiply to make positive 4 and when you combine their x terms in the middle, make negative 4x, these are both minus 2. So this is x minus 2 times x minus 2. And so what we have here, we have two zeros slash x-intercepts. We have one that comes from this 2x term, because that would mean that if x was 0, the entire thing would be 0. Or if x was positive two, and notice it just repeats here, if x was two or if x was two, so we only have two zeros, this one just repeats itself, and that's gonna cause an interesting feature we'll talk about in a second. So what we know is, if I know one thing about this function so far, it's that we have, so let me write the factored form down here so we can have it, 
it's f of x is equal to 2x times x minus 2 times x minus 2. You could also write that as x minus 2 squared, whichever one you prefer. And so I know that this function crosses the graph at 0, and all, sorry, crosses the x-axis at 0, and also at 2. But other than that, you know, what else happens? Does it look, does it look like this? Does it maybe look like this? Does it maybe look like this? There's a whole bunch of different ways this function can look. And so what we're going to do is we are going to just ask ourselves what happens to the left and right of each of these x-intercepts. Reason being, we know they're the only x-intercepts. If there were other ones, we would have found them. So we're going to just ask, what happens to the left of 0? What happens between 0 and 2? And what happens to the right? And the way we're going to do this is we are going to just consider, is my function above the x-axis? Is it positive? Or is it below the x-axis? Is it negative? Just to do a quick quick sketch of what this looks like with its key features. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do this thing called a sign chart and here is how it looks. Let me zoom this in a little bit more so we can get a little more room. Here's how it looks. I'm going to draw a straight line and I'm going to divide this up into three sections split up by our x-intercepts of 0 and 2. And what we're going to do is we are going to imagine, we are going to imagine what happens, and so let me do my f of x down here. We're going to imagine what happens to the left and right of 0 and 2, and here's how we're going to do it. You can pick any number as long as it is correctly split so that you have one number to the left of 0, one number that's between 0 and 2, and one number that's to the right. And all I care about is, is f of x positive or negative? So here's what I mean by that's all I care about. I'll do one where I actually plug it in. Let's try f of negative 1. f of negative 1 would be 2 times negative 1 times negative 1 minus 2 times negative 1 minus 2. All I've done is I've plugged in for each of these x values. And so I could work this whole thing out. That would be equal to 2 times negative 1 times negative 3 times negative 3. And so we would have equal to uh, negative 2 times negative 3 would be negative 6, and then times another negative, sorry, would be positive 6, and then times a negative 3 would be negative 18. But what's really important here is just that f of x is a negative number. That's all I really care about. I know now that to the left of 0, my function is going down. If I wanted to, I could plot this way down here, negative 1 comma negative 18, but I don't even have the room. What's important here is that when x is negative 1, we have a negative number. Now, I want you to think just kind of logically about this. If the purple one is the only x-intercept until we hit the green, well, then what must happen is we must go up from here and eventually go down. So I can draw this in a whole bunch of ways, but I eventually have to go back down to hit the green one. Let's just check this to make sure. Let me see what f of 1 would be, and I'm going to show you a trick. All I care about is are each of the three terms that I have here, 1, 2, and 3, are they positive or negative? Well, if f of 1, if we plug in 1, 2 times 1, 2x, that's positive. 1 minus 2, that's negative 1, that's negative. Ne 1 minus 2, that's negative. So we have a positive times a negative times a negative. That will be equal to a positive number, just like we expected. So yes, and I'll start to do these in different colors so you can see it all. Yes, we will be going up during this section. Now what I expect to happen is that there are two possibilities. Either I cross right through and my function looks like this, or 
I bounce back and start to go back up. And so the way we're going to tell what happens is we're going to think about what would happen if I plugged in 3. So let's say f of 3. 1, 2, 3 different terms. There's the 2x, the x minus 2, and the x minus 2. Well, if you plug in 3, 2 times 3 is positive. Plug in 3, 3 minus 2 is positive. Plug in 3, 3 minus 2 is positive. Oh man, this whole thing is positive. So that means that my function has this interesting feature of it's going to go down, it's going to touch this green dot, and then it's going to come back up. Then it is going to come back up. And so this is a key, key, key function analysis skill. You know, if I look up back at the original, okay, not bad, not bad. I have zero, my function goes through zero, comes back down, bounces at two, and goes up. My function goes through zero, come back down, comes back down to two, and bounces back up. So roughly we have this correct. Now, when you see this done very quickly, it's going to look like the following. If you have f of x is equal to 2x times x minus 2 squared. I'm going to show you the quick shortcut. The shortcut here is that 2x, okay, there's my 1, 0. It's at 0. x minus 2, we have a 0 at positive 2 with what we call a multiplicity of 2 meaning there are two terms that if you plug in x equals 2, you'd get a 0, and that's what causes that bounce back motion. That's what causes us to go down, touch the x-axis, and bounce back, just like it would look on an x squared function. That is going to be a quick way of doing it. If you are ever really stuck, you can rely on a sign chart. All right, the second concept here, and this will go a lot more quickly, is just considering what happens at the ends. So we already roughly know what our function looks like. This is this same function. I want to show you one other way of analyzing this from the original unfactored form, and that's by thinking about end behavior. What I mean by end behavior is what happens as we move forever to the right towards what we call positive infinity or towards the left what we call negative infinity. And my question is basically, does x head towards, or as x heads towards infinity, left and right, does y head towards infinity? Does y go up, or does y go down to negative infinity? And so the way we're going to do this is by thinking about the following. If we have 2x cubed, and let me remember what this was, 2x cubed minus 8x squared plus 8x, 2x cubed minus 8x squared plus 8x. As our graph is heading towards the right forever, what that means is x is heading towards positive infinity. And so I'm just going to think about this by plugging in infinity. So let's just pretend here, f of infinity, or as you're going to see it on delta math, f of a really big number is kind of a fun way to do this, would be 2 times a really big number cubed minus 8 times a really big number squared plus 8 times a really big number. Now here's the moral of the story on this one. If you have a number that is big enough, the fact that you are cubing it, if the number is big enough, all that is going to matter in the end, what will dominate in the end, is this leading term. If I tell you I'm about to give you a million dollars, and more specifically, I'm going to give you two times a million dollars cubed, a million times a million times a million, you don't really care what happens after that. The other things are going to be so small compared to what that first term is, only the leading term matters. And so if we have two times a really big number cubed, well, two times a really big number cubed as long as this big number is positive, is positive. So we are heading towards a positive really big number or positive infinity. So what we would say is, we would say, as x heads towards infinity, y 
also heads towards infinity. And we can see that happening right there. As x is moving to the right, y is moving up. As x is heading to infinity, y is moving to infinity. Now, to consider the other case, let's consider what happens if we plug in a really big negative number, f of negative infinity. Well, we would have 2 times a negative really big number cubed minus 8 times a negative really big number squared plus 8 times a really big number. Same idea, if the term is sufficiently big, all I care about is the leading term. But now here's where it gets interesting. If I have 2 times a big negative number cubed, I would have 2 times a negative times a negative times a negative. That's 2 times a positive times a negative. That is a negative 2 times a really big number. This is heading towards negative infinity. So as x heads towards negative infinity, which remember is left, y heads towards positive infinity, which is to the right. And so that's just another way that we can analyze functions by talking about their end behavior in addition to their zeros.